Okay, traders, that is 1 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, and we are about to get going here with this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Before we jump into today's presentation, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's presentation is the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Those of you here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriate at that stage, day gambling. And after some early beginner's luck, I actually racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. Say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with this mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I had not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly, though, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand and accept the true nature of trader, trading being a, a numbers game in which we're simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of individual trades, or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service. Again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily uh, technical trade setups through the Tickmill Trading View account, and I'll post a link for that at the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, I also run Tickmill's uh, e-mini strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre-market thoughts for the cash trading session ahead. I give my bias for the day and my specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 5,000 points of profit since we started the group in April 2021. The second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Tickmill Futures Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the cash trading session in New York, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. So that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Now let's jump into the charts. Um, what I would say before I get going with the charts here is I'm going to run through the 
charts that I'm tracking at the moment and setups I'm, I'm watching. Um, if you have any questions, just drop them into the chat box. And at the end of the session, I'll come back to those. Um, and if you have an instrument you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in my slide deck here, uh, you can also put that into the chat and I'll, uh, I'll give you a view on that. I would say today I'm a little bit time constrained because I want to be off uh, at least 10 minutes before the CPI release, as I'm obviously going to be looking to, to trade that myself today and trade the market reaction. So I want to get prepped for that. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to try and keep this to uh, to 20 minutes today. Okay, so starting with the S&P 500, so two competing setups here. And the bullish thesis is versus this 3700 level. Uh, we're sitting right at trend line support here at the 3750s. If we can hold here um, and get a break through, back through 3840s, then uh, that's gonna be a, a, give a, a bullish impetus to the, the trade. Uh, we'd look, I'd look for a break back through 3870s to retarget the prior highs here, 39.25s. The ultimate objective um, versus the current setup, and I'll just draw this so you understand what I'm talking about. I'll repeat this throughout the uh, presentation. I'm looking for an equality objective versus this swing structure, which gives us a target level now of 41.28. Now, if we don't, if the CPI print comes out uh, on the hot side today, and that gives further cover to the Fed, obviously to ramp up the rates, uh, we will see a negative reaction. I'd be looking for any break of the key level for me on the downside today is 39.96. Keep that level in mind. If we get a breakthrough there, then the next downside objective versus the swing structure here and equality objective will be 36.42. So any break of 36.96 today, I will be I would be looking to be short. I'd be targeting initially 36.42 as the next downside objective. Moving to the NASDAQ. So we're sitting uh, again, NASDAQ is sitting at some pivotal support. The NASDAQ has been the weakest of all the equity indexes, obviously, it, uh, it being a, a duration asset. So, uh, you know, the, the, the investment in these in, in a lot of these tech firms is that, down, that the hope is down the line, they'll be delivering revenues, et cetera. And with obviously fiscal conditions tightening, they don't have access to that capital. And that's been weighing on the stock prices. So the NASDAQ has been the weakest of all the equity indexes. So from a technical perspective at the moment, versus the swing low here at 10,641, uh, 10, we have an equality objective above us at 11,878. For me, I'd really want to see a close back through this high volume node, 11,128, to get a, a confirmation signal that we're likely to trade up into this target zone. If today, uh, we again, it's going to be pretty much dependent upon this inflation print. But if certainly if we start to take out the invalidation level here, 10,641, my focus then would be on the downside and we would be thinking about a move towards 10,000 on the downside. So uh, that's the, those are the key levels in terms of the NASDAQ. Dow Jones has been the outperformer in terms of US equity indexes. And the reason for that, as I mentioned last week, is this is where the value plays are. So uh, growth is in tech and the value, safety, utilities, uh, healthcare, financials, et cetera, are in the Dow. So that's why it's been a relative outperformer, relative strength we're seeing in the Dow. Um, what I'm looking for now is any pullback into the trend channel support here, 32,000. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. I've got a target on the upside. Uh, 33,800. Equally, any close back through this trend channel resistance, this internal trend channel resistance, would be a bullish confirmation for me as well. So close back through 33,000. Again, same target on the upside, 33,800. At this stage, it would take a close back through 31,745, which would be a bearish development. And then we would be starting to think about downside objectives. But for now, the, uh, the impetus here, whilst we hold this Support zone 32,000 is for 33,800 test. Russell, the small caps. Again, uh, relative weakness we're seeing here in terms of the Russell. So um, versus the resistance at uh, 1796, I'm looking for a test of 1721. If we take that out on a closing basis, the next downside objective for the Russell here on the weekly versus the swing structure and the quality objective is 1575. Noteworthy, the Russell is the only index out of the US uh, indices not to have tested their its equality objective, all the others have. Moving to Germany, DAX has been a relative outperformer. 
And what we are seeing here at the moment is the potential now for any move that tests and holds 13,474. I'm looking for the next leg to the upside to target 14,000. Um, from there, I'd anticipate we get another pullback equal to, let me just draw this in here so you can see what I'm talking about in terms of the wave structure. We have wave one, two, potential wave three here into 14,000. I'll be looking for wave four back into 13,000. Uh, 300, and then we get a final fifth wave extension towards 14,200, and then from there, I would anticipate we see a deeper corrective move. Um, so for now, the focus is really on this uh, 13,453. If we take that out, then I would anticipate that this is actually our wave three high, and we'd have a wave uh, four equality objective to the downside at 13,000. When I talk about the equality objective, I'm referencing this uh, symmetry swing here in terms of our the scope and scale of our wave two overlaid versus our potential wave three high so the, that's what we're tracking in terms of the dax there the nikkei traded up into the target zone we're now getting a pullback and it is sitting at pivotal support so the nikkei if we can get a close back through twenty seven thousand five hundred, i'd be bullish the nikkei looking for an upside objective now into twenty eight thousand two hundred. It would really take a loss of the high volume node here, 27,000, uh, to suggest that we're done on the upside for now. And we'd be thinking about a test down into trend channel support, 26,400. The Nifty, the Indy, the Indian Nifty here. This has got an interesting technical setup here. We, this is one of the few equity indexes to actually make new highs um, this year. So with the, Nifty, uh, with the Nifty here, any pullback into the uh, 17,848, I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns there. And we have a, a five equals one objective and a 127 extension versus our last corrective leg, which gives us an upside objective just below 18,500. So 17,840 area, watch bullish reversal patterns, gives us a target there, 18,500. TLT, the iShares. 20-year treasury bond ETF. Got a setup here that's developing. Obviously, it's going to be very dependent upon the uh, inflation data today. Um, but if the inflation data comes in uh, in line or a little bit weaker than expected, we could see an upside extension here. We've got a target versus the swing low. The invalidation level is 93.30. And that gives us a 99.19 target on the upside. If inflation comes in hotter, uh, money is going to be uh, coming out of the uh, out of the bonds uh, and in, uh, obviously raising yields. So we'd anticipate then that our next downside objective is 9026 on the downside. Again, I'd watch for bullish reversal patterns there as long as we maintain momentum divergence and we could see another corrective leg to the upside. Moving to the FX space, dollar index has. Uh, it tested or came just shy of last week's equality objective, uh, which was the 109 level. We're now seeing a corrective move here. I'm looking for a uh, rejection into the uh, 111.30, 111.50 area uh, to set up the next leg to the downside. We have a new equality objective versus the swing setup, which gives us a test of 107.72s. At uh, this stage, any close back through or above 113 would be a bullish development. We would then be looking for an upside extension into the next targets on the upside are as high now as 118. Uh, but we have so far managed to maintain that uh, that resistance at 113.85. So uh, that's a key level on the upside to bear in mind. But we're, again, this is going to be very dependent today on the inflation data, so we can expect some volatility there. But we have our invalidation level set up and we have our target levels. Euro. <clears throat> We've got a new upside objective in terms of the euro versus the swing low here at 97.29. I'm looking for a test of 102.84. We've got a little internal quality objective that's been tested here, 99.40. We're finding a little bit of demand coming in again, though. This one's going to be very dependent on the uh, on the inflation data, but certainly any move back through uh, the 10040 would be bullish and uh, would encourage a test up into this 102, uh, 102.80s target zone. Sterling, 
similar setup here. We have this trend line support coming in. So I'm looking for selling to ultimately test and hold uh, just below 113. And if we get that, the next upside objective is going to be this ascending trend line resistance that comes in uh, 117.65. We have an ultimate target level up at 120 versus the swing low here at the 109.20s. Dollar yen. Uh, got the breakdown through that uh, through that 146 area. We've now snapped back to test resistance here at the 147. As long as 147 holds, we have a downside objective at 143.26, which is the uh, the equality objective here versus the swing structure after the last leg of intervention from the BOJ. This stage, any close back above this internal trend channel resistance, so 147.60s would suggest uh, that we're in a range trade, I think then, and we could think about a move certainly back up into the 148.85s and then potentially into the invalidation level 149.70s. Euro yen, <clears throat> paying close attention to 145.20s. If we uh, if we hold there and get a bullish reversal pattern, there's the potential that we extend higher again and uh, and take out this trend channel resistance 146.70s. However, if we don't find demand here at the 145.20s, currently have a downside objective in terms of the euro yen and this swing structure here, the equality objective gives us a downside target of 143.16. So watch for any break of that 145.20, 145 area as confirmation there. And so you can see the daily setup is uh, is looking pretty perilous as well. So any daily close back through that 145, want to be short euro yen looking for downside objectives. Uh, let's push, let's move this on. Uh, dollar CAD. Got a nice setup developing here. So I'd be looking for any break back through the 134.90s, uh, 134.60s. We have uh, two equality objectives. Uh, sorry, not an equality objective. We have a 161 extension from the swing high here at 138.50s, but we have the equality objective, 138. This would be considered WXY pattern for Elliott waivers. So that we have the confidence down here at 133.20s, 133.30s. So any loss there uh, back through this uh, 135, we have downside objectives, 133.20s, 133.30s. Moving to the Aussie. So we, uh, we've, we achieved our first target on the upside, which was that 65.20 test. We then got the pullback held, and we now have a new uh, equality objective, which versus the swing low here at 62.70s, we are looking for a test of 6590s. So I've been looking for any close back through this internal trend channel resistance as, uh, as confirmation for that next leg to the upside, or we get a deeper pullback here into the trend channel support again at 6320s. Watch a bullish reversal patterns there, break through the trend channel resistance, same target on the upside. Is, uh, is what we're looking for there, 65.90s. This stage, only a loss of the 62.70s, the bearish development, and we'd be opening downside targets again. The Kiwi, similar setup to the Aussie one, nice trend channel here. So we are looking to find support into uh, 58.18s, the 58 level. Let's bring in our internal trend channel resistance. So I'd be looking for any close through this trend channel on the upside as a bullish development. And we've got an equality objective, new equality objective on the upside at 6160s. Um, at this stage, it would take a close back through 5739 to suggest this upside uh, correction is complete. And then we'd be thinking about downside targets again. Euro Swiss. This one's got an interesting setup. So if we test here, if we test and hold the 98 to 98, 10 level, watch for bullish reversal patterns there, engage on the long side. Next <coughs> target to the upside will be the 9930s, but ultimately we have this equality objective still in play, uh, which is 10030s on the upside. Moving to the metals, let's take a quick look at gold. Gold's got nice bullish structure here. So I'm looking for any break back through the 1720 to target 1750 on the upside in terms of gold. 
Uh, if we, if obviously if the inflation data is hotter than expected, I think we get a deeper pullback and we likely retest prior trend line resistance then to act as support before we try and make this next move to the upside. But ultimately, I'm looking for 1740, 1750 as the uh, as the target there in terms of gold, crude oil in a box trade at the moment. Really, I think uh, we're just in this range, 9370s to 8120s big range, but um, versus the swing low that we have at the 81 level, as long as that holds that 81 handle, we still have an upside objective here at 9870s in terms of uh, crude oil, but I'd be waiting for a break of range resistance uh, before getting in on the long side. And we'll wrap things up with Bitcoin. Obviously, it's been a uh, torrid week for, uh, for crypto bulls with the FTX collapse. Um, and for those who have been here uh, week in, week out, we've still got that 12,185 level. If we get down there, if we see some uh, forced selling, some margin calls coming in and we liquidate down into that area, that's going to be a key area for me. I'm going to be paying very close attention for longer term uh, position trades in terms of crypto and Bitcoin. Any move into that area, I'm going to be uh, certainly watching for daily reversal patterns to build longer term swing positions in terms of uh, in terms of bitcoin there and the uh, the crypto space in general so that's the whistle stop tour of the uh, setups i'm looking at obviously paying very close attention to the cpi data coming up in 10 minutes and uh, and that's going to have a big impact today in terms of dollar risk sentiment in general so uh, so that's going to uh, really define the next i think directional drive in terms of these these markets are there any questions I'll post uh, quickly. Just post the links into the chat here for those who want to get the uh, daily trade plan for the uh, S and P five hundred or the E mini S and P. Uh, all you have to do is request access, and you can uh, and you can get that daily trade plan. And I post some other interesting information, institutional insights, etc., in that group. Okay, I can't see any questions coming through. So, like I said, I'm going to wrap this one up uh, a little earlier today, as I want to uh, to prep for the uh, for this CPI trade. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.